Live PvP is hard, at least that's what I think. So I've brought in the big guns today and I'm talking about Prodigy who is my guild leader but also a live PvP streamer. How you doing Prodigy? Doing very well, thank you for having me. So the idea here today is that uh, Prodigy is going to give me some notes on my, uh, my recent uh, live PvP is hard video where I, I don't think across the two videos, I don't think I even won a match. Uh, and we have class. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, and uh, people were like, you're so brave for posting this. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. Uh, and it, this is really relevant right now because class match starts tomorrow and it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty tricky rule set. Yeah, so tomorrow is the 220 cost uh, looking at just units, which makes it a little weird because a lot of times people will concede their costs uh, by taking Leona's Castle or other efficient low rarity vision cards. But the fact that they're forcing you to think about your units a lot more is going to be pretty drastic uh, of a change for some people. So I'm really curious to see what comes out of the meta this time. Uh, but in addition to that, there's also the 50% magic attack resistance and missile attack resistance. So uh, Sharpshoot and Holy are 50% worse against everybody. So evade might be a big thing, but then also you might have some anti-evade stuff with like sneak attack, charm, whatever. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a bloodbath for sure. Yeah, and I feel like my MR units are like Ryryu, Mustadio. Uh, <laughs> I've got a couple like magic users, and then when you hey, Mustadio is no slouch. Let's be honest. Yeah, <laughs> even insane. even with the reduced damage, maybe he's. You were saying that he could do uh, some status effect stuff anyway, so he might be viable, but. Like it's now all I have left is like Gafgarian and like Mont and Etra and stuff. It's not looking uh, <laughs> too, too good. <laughs> yeah, get that Phoebe. Uh, so why don't you tell us uh, a little bit about um, about your stream and then kind of some of the stuff that you do and then uh, what the plan is for this uh, this master class, let's call it. <laughs> all right, so. Uh, I stream War Divisions, uh, primarily live PvP. Uh, I try to do twice a week normally, uh, on either like a Wednesday and Thursday, somewhere in there, and then typically on Sunday nights. But I didn't stream this week. Uh, apologies to anyone watching that was looking forward to that. Uh, but whenever there's a class match week, like this coming week, uh, I will stream every single night uh, all of my class matches. So I'll do Wednesday to Wednesday. If it takes an hour, two hours, 30 minutes, whatever, however long it takes, I stream all of it. Um, Sniping doesn't really happen. Uh, there's enough people in the pool that it hasn't really been an issue before. I faced some people in the chat before, but it wasn't, you know, because they're in my chat. Uh, yeah, so if you want to learn, I, I talk the whole time I play. I talk through my plays, my thoughts, and like why I'm doing things. And if I take a risk or something, I explain why I went for the 20% chance. Uh, so yeah, I think a lot of people can learn from it. But also, I mean, we have a lot of fun in there. I uh, I roll my eyes at myself all the time. I call myself bad and <laughs> we just kind of have a good time all around, even when I get tilted sometimes. But, you know, it comes with the territory. Yeah, I don't know if like if you have time during live PvP to snipe somebody, I don't even know like how do you <laughs> compute all of that information anyway. So it's more of uh, the main issue is composition wise. So like yeah, say I'm using something like, a, I don't know, a rain and someone snipes me with like sub monk Glacella like <laughs> she's just gonna like he's got like what minus 30 strike and he's fire oh, yeah. so she'll just one shot him out of that and stuff like that can happen but in the actual game itself and the plays that doesn't yeah it's really hard to process all of that in the amount of time you have to take your turns unless i'm like saying yeah three turns from now i plan on <laughs> pre-casting this over here <laughs> but so, so uh, walk yeah. me through the the plan for today with uh how we're gonna do this so I thought we would watch the second match of your first video. Um, the first match, uh, you can see the little bar down here of like the estimated time. You, it, it didn't last as long. Uh, <laughs> but the second match, I actually think is one of the more learnable. I don't even know if that's the right term, but it's a very good match to watch to learn a lot of things. So everything from little micro decisions to taking risks to uh, maybe missed opportunities or just like little tiny things, even moving like one space extra, one space less in some situations. I remember thinking the whole time, like, man, I could just like every single turn I could dissect. And uh, I, we talked a little bit about it. Uh, some of my initial thoughts. I'm like, listen, I could sit here for an hour talking about this one match. <laughs> um, and then you had mentioned that, hey, well, sometime we should do this collaboration and go through it and make a video out of it. So here we are and I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm going to try not to be too long-winded, but I do think there's a lot to say. 
And a lot of the things that happened in this match are applicable to a majority of other matches I've seen people play or that I play myself. So, okay, that's awesome. I'm really excited to hear about this. And I, and I feel like you probably have all this practice whenever you play against someone kind of in my position where as you play against them, you're like, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat. Uh, it's less about, it's not always necessary, necessarily like the, like a wrong play either. It's just like mm -hmm. something might've been more optimal based on what could happen in the next turn or something like that. That isn't, like I said, it's not wrong. It's just a different way to look at it that can across lots of games, increase your overall win rate. All right, well, let's, so. uh, let's get into it. Cool. So you can see my mouse, right? Moving around here on your uh, beautiful mug up here. Well, they can't actually <laughs> see, they can't see the old me. I'm covering perfectly the oh, okay, old excellent. footage of me. So uh, you guys are lucky. Perfect, perfect. No double to see. Right, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look at it and just pretend it's, it's me. So, okay, we're going to start right here. Uh, when you enter a match, um, the first thing I like to do is obviously look at the opponent's units and kind of come up with an initial game plan. What do you notice about this matchup? Just like right off the bat. So I know um, they. I've got a couple. I've got missile resist, uh, and they've got a Frederica. Uh, I've got yep. the elemental strength on multiple units. So Hallet against uh, Kelfay, and then Victora uh, should hopefully be able to one shot a, a Leela. Um, but I do also notice that Kelfay can probably kill my units or just tank my units pretty well if I can't get around her. Yeah, so all of that's correct. <laughs> um, it, this is actually a really interesting matchup. The way your two teams are weaved together with, yeah, you have advantage directly on two of uh, their units, but also their unit of Kilfay covers your Victora that covers Leela, and Leela can just stay in the back, whereas Victoria has to kind of come up a little more and Kilfay can play, you know, that game. But Victora also sort of counters the Frederica a bit, who is going to be doing the main damage while you approach. So there's a lot going on here. Um, and Delita also throws in a wrench because he, he does surprising damage sometimes, um, mm -hmm. but also is relatively bulky, especially if you can sit there and spam Sentinel. He's got a moral spirit, so you have to at least hit him twice. Um, so yeah, there's a lot going on in this matchup just now. <laughs> so that was just one thing I wanted to talk about. And uh, I think the, f the other thing to identify here is your win con, which you identified kill phase is going to be tough for two of your units to deal with. Um, you're playing around Howlet blowing kill off the map. Okay. I think that's the that's like the main plan of this match is protecting Howlow while he approaches. So I'm gonna go through here. I might be able to fast forward a little bit here and there. Um, perfect top down view. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I know it when you're making videos, you want to have the other view because it's more like cinematic, but it's so much more efficient to click like this. Oh, big time! And you know what? It looks it, you get to see the action when it zooms in anyway. So yeah, there, this right, is right. the you only see the ability play. cast. All right, so she does the buff here. I don't really agree with that because like that means she thinks you're going to approach immediately. And if you'd like stayed back right now and just buffed up, you would punish her and she'd lose her TMR activation. So mm. um, not I don't think that's the right move, especially because you have Victoria. But OK, so you stood still. What was your thinking there? I believe and I played a lot of teams, but I believe that I'm I want to now put uh, mastery TMR barrier on everybody. Fair enough. OK. We'll see if that's accurate. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you are right now that you say that. I uh because like for Victora, like my I'm like lasered in like I wanna go kill this Leela and I wanna get crystal control. Because mm -hmm. if you were say you moved up to the spot which would have been like right here, uh Frederica can't do what she's doing. She can't move up here because she'll just die next turn. So oh, that's assuming really no point. reflex. Uh but she's gonna I think she just stands still too. She's probably just checking damage there. I'm assuming she was seeing how much her sharp she was gonna do to your units. Uh, Cause she got that height three, so she gets the extra range. Yeah, nice blessing. Best good. TMR. Oh yeah, it's so good. Healed 400 through the crazy low healing reduction yeah. <laughs> on this map too. Um, so one thing I will say, which I think you, I mean, you're talking through the video, so maybe, or were these uh, pre-recorded, or were, were you watching uh, or commenting live? I was I commenting live. I was so nervous. Okay. I'll say yeah, cause I, uh, I imagine, yeah, if you don't do this a ton talking while playing is really difficult mm -hmm. um but what you did on Lila's first turn i try to do at all times which is uh click on this this map view here and then you get to click on their unit and see how far they can move so mm -hmm. like you've already identified one of her passes right she's got shikuchi so you know now that she can't also have shadow runner most likely uh with the high luck because she has 
um, most likely level four to level three passive. So just like that little information too, you've like sort of identified their build partially. Okay, yeah. And you know what's kind of embarrassing? I, I moved Delita up three uh, because I didn't know you could check people's move. Or maybe I did okay. back at this point. At one point I was moving Delita up three, even though I had move four on, because I thought I was mm -hmm. tricking people into thinking he couldn't get to them <laughs> as quickly as he could. Uh, and then I think partway through the class match, I realized you could click on units. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. There you go. <laughs> well, they have to know that too, right? So, yeah. You know, if they didn't know. So, yeah, here, Delia can just take a free hit because uh, there's nothing that he can do. So, even if you move four, he has nothing that's what, one, two, three, four, five. I guess he. Taunting Blade doesn't have a height range of two, does it? I don't believe it does. Oh, uh, I feel like Taunting one, two, three, Spell four, does, but one, two, Taunting three, Blade maybe not. Taunting Blade does have four. I, I just don't like four range, so you could like yeah. four AoE here, but I don't think it has the height. I could be wrong. Um, but lucky, I always have War of the Visions Calc open whenever yeah. I say these things, so I can double check myself. Um, yeah, it has range height of one, so yeah, yeah, she's safe here. And I always want to go for that crystal with Delita to be able to Taunting Blade that's the farthest range i have like to be able to do that multiple times um right can help them get involved but like again if you had moved uh victor uh, not even all the way up just like to this spot right here in the previous turn hmm. you would have that threat distance of this four plus her basically six on a diagonal with her lb um which would have uh, he ended up not taking the middle but uh had he taken the middle it would have been punishable on the previous turn by this and like leela's not like it is magic against someone who's not good against magic, but it's still wind on ice, which matters often a lot more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, nothing major here, just kind of like talking points, really. Big time. Um, I wonder, actually, I could probably play this back a little faster and then I can just pause and go back if I need to. Yeah, yeah, we got the, the speed up. Forgot about that. All right, cool. You can see everybody kind of rocking faster. Yeah. <laughs> okay, protect. Yep, that's good practice. How it moving up. So here, I know you just heard me say it out loud. Um, I was starting to count sort of the spaces for um, if he were to move here, right? Yeah. Then it's one, two, three, four, five. And typically nothing goes further than five. So they'd have to move up to here with a range five move to threaten you, which none of them can, except for Leela could go one, two, three, four, and then do like an AoE. But I, Howlet probably doesn't care. He probably can't, he won't die in one hit to her. So you'd be able to jamming thrust her back okay, uh, to punch yeah. her, which makes it unlikely that they would do that in the first place. So you could have actually probably taken this extra spot if you don't. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and then it also pushes Killfate back because uh, Hell, it's one of the biggest threats to Killfate in the game. Um, so it also would have made it so that she couldn't walk up either. Hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think I, uh, I over respected Frederica in general in <laughs> in like class yeah. match. She's very good. It's just um, in a team like this, when she's paired with two magic users, she can only have so much uh, vision card support, right? Yeah. So she might have Frederick's Dream, but she doesn't have the other ones. And actually, that's another good point. Uh, I don't think you've checked their VCs yet this match. No. Okay. So let's, let's, uh, oh, yeah, we can't do it, but um, describe that process. <laughs> right. So uh, basically, as soon as, um, if I have like a choreographed opener, like you have your revitalize, I would have done on your first turn since you have control over the amount of uh, time on the clock. But uh, you can wait till their turn to do it too. Uh, click the map, like I said, and it shows like, you know, where the current unit can move to. And then click this magnifying glass right here, which will pull up a menu. Um, I don't know if you ever do that. I, I don't for do any it in reason. This, uh, I don't do it here at all. Okay. Um, and then there will be a menu down here that says party abilities and it'll have a bunch of symbols. If you click that, it'll pull up their vision cards and it'll show their party abilities plus the magnitude of those abilities. So say you see an Odin with like 12 unit resist, you know it's not a maxed Odin. So that their, you know, man is also lower, their stats are generally lower. And that also tells you a little something about the player too. Like you're not judging people for not having max vision cards, but you at least know that they're maybe not as whaley, so maybe their equipment isn't as good. And you can kind of gather information like that too. But shouldn't we? Shouldn't we judge people for not having? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm trying to be nice here, but yeah. <laughs> no. So, so uh, that'd be an important thing to know here, because then, like, you would know if she has, uh, say, a, like Odin to help the whole team, or if she's being selfish with a Frederick's dream, or things that might. Uh, maybe she's going like full support and like she's just trying to arm shot and be disabled. So she's got like something that helps the magic users. You don't know. So 
checking the vision cards towards the beginning of the match can give you a lot, on, uh, a lot of information as well. Hmm. That's a lot of what's going to be in this match is information gathering and then knowing how to use that to your advantage in the future. There's, a, there's one turn in particular I'm waiting for. I know, I actually comes thought... Comes later, yeah. I thought I was a pretty bold player, but I'm finding I can be a little bit more bold with my moves for sure. It's a, it takes a lot of uh, unit knowledge. Like you have to know what their max threat range is to know if you're safe being aggressive. Um, and like I said, identifying in the beginning of the match, you know, what it, what's your goal? How are you going to win this particular matchup? And like I said, here it's going to be they misplay their little Leela into your Victra or your Howlet blows up their Kilfe. Okay, so this <laughs> is the first time <laughs> this happens. Um, I think you don't notice it this time, but you notice it the second time, which is doo, 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 that you have your <laughs> charm over here on your Delita. Um, I know the first time I was watching this, I was like, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think you end up, if I recall right, I think you end up not doing it here. Um, this is, I like this. So what this does is since you have movement four, uh, you can get, let's go back for a second. You can move one, two, three, four to here, which gives you this diagonal. Um, it kind of cuts the Frederica in because if she come, so the Frederica either has to stay over here to not get hit by the Victor up, and then she can also get horizontal jumped, which is a problem. Um, here she can get Dragon Dove, Dragon Dove. Dra so like Victra covers this whole area for Frederica, so she has to do something. But if she moves too much this way, you're just going to LB her. So it really puts a lot of pressure on her. But what it also does is this little Leela has to stay back too. She can't just go up on this wall and try to support. She has to go around now because you have, she has to worry about the LB as well. So um, I do like this crystal position from your Victra. Yeah, and I can't say that I thought it out that much. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, Victra is one of those units that uh, until you play with her many, 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 many times, you just it's really hard to internalize her range. Um, like knowing it's uh, three diagonal, which is essentially six in a direction, because, you know, mm -hmm. typically with you go orthogonally where it's like up over, up over, up over. So it's six. Um, being able to just see that is not easy. Like I, I mess it up all the time. I've I lost class matches in this map to it not calculating correctly. So I mean, it happens to everybody. So here she is, not safe. So this is actually you're throwing a party in your head right now <laughs> because um, she can get charmed in that position. You, you know what? You know what I was doing in my uh, at that point. Uh, I can see my little camera up here. I was showing off my non-alcoholic beer to the camera and talking about <laughs> it instead of thinking about the charm. All right. So here again, uh, you chose to stay back one space. It's just going to cost you movement later. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of being able to move to this space later, you can only go here, which makes it awkward because say you wanted to stand still with Delita for some reason, uh, you're now blocking yourself by two movements instead of just the one. Yeah, and that's um, okay. Which may or may not become relevant. Because again, you almost like you almost want to give your howlet to this Kilfe, because you want the Kilfe to stand right about where he's standing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Just potentially wipe him off the map. Now the awkward thing here too is he is positioning in a way that uh, Victor LB will hit your Delita if you want to hit the Kilfe as well. So a little awkward. And I think, I don't think he was thinking this, but also happens to be if you were to LB his Fred, it will also hear Delita. Yeah, that's so that's something you can do against Victoria. And I guess we might see more Victoria coming up here uh, in the next class match since she's gonna fit into the, into the scheme. Yeah, I think she's gonna be an excellent unit, uh, mainly because of her 70 cost, actually. Mm. Like she, she has a lower cost as a, still pretty powerful uh unit okay so here this is this is beautiful <laughs> this is one of those times you're like if i crit if i crit if i crit and you click oh, it know. and then you realize <laughs> look at that it's a hundred percent uh chance and see i didn't know i, I want to point out to everybody as well um if you can show up by frederica's uh, beautiful face up there there's these two little arrow buttons um, and you can click those. I was trying to figure out what's the chance on my Delita or on another video I was. You can cycle through your targets of her limit break and I can see what the charm chance is on Delita. And I didn't know you do, could do that. Do you know how long I've known that? How long? About a week. 
Yeah, exactly. I had no idea either, and someone told me on stream I felt like such an idiot because we were testing the Black Rose Helena VC. Oh, yeah. And like which directions it pulls in, and I was going through the different like targets and stuff. It was really interesting. But anyway, uh, Frederica is weak to charm, by the way, uh, by I think it's 10%. So oh, it's a sense. lot easier to get her to 100 as well. Okay, so you did go for it. I don't know if you noticed. They do you remember if you knew you were going to hit your delete or not? There was definitely a play in class match where I knew I would hit my delete. Oh, okay. There's but the, it there's might the, not uh, have been. It might not bomb. have been this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So protect on your now charmed Fred. Okay, so coming up is my one of my favorite things I've ever seen in live PvP. Is this turn right here. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do it. Let's... So when you have a charmed unit, it, it acts as if it's your unit right or when your opponent sorry if if a unit is charmed it acts in every way like it's on the other team now it's not the other team of the one who charmed it it's the other team compared to whose its original owner is so your delita decides to be a bro here and still work for you and just <laughs> destroy this frederica anyway because they're both charmed and now they're on opposite teams so it's a valid target and it's hilarious i love oh man I was laughing so hard when I saw that. I was like, I was all worried that your game was just over. You're going to turn around and kill your Howlet. And then that happened. And it was so fantastic. Yeah, that was that was honestly the best. So now Leela here has an option. Uh, she can either choose to hit your Victor, which isn't a lot of damage, hit your Howlet, probably not a lot of damage. Full life the Victora, uh, definitely not break the charm. So I, it's kind of a weird turn for the Leela. Um, I'd probably just go for the full life if it's fast enough, but I, it seems like it's been a while since you guys have taken turns, so I think that your units would actually be able to in intercept that. Yeah, and that's another piece of feedback I got, is not to put my camera over the turn order like a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it's current turn, and the next turn is two, so like it, it really, yeah. it's not blocking any information. So don't feel too bad about that one. Okay, so they lost their turn, which is great for you okay this is the one of the biggest turns i think for um learning moment mm -hmm. uh so here you go lb and you see it's 2.6 then you switch off you check arrow blade which is good damage then you committed mm -hmm. so in these types of times where you you know you're gonna hit them for something right for some amount of damage uh you should check all types and range of damage so i would have done say drain evocation just to see uh i know it's not going to kill because it's not a high multiplier but could i do something next turn to kill uh but the biggest one is you didn't check hazard slash yeah um hazard slash is massive damage and if i recall correctly kill Fae... okay kill Fae is a little bit resistant to slash but you do have, I assume, Sharp Mind uh, to penetrate the spirit and on him, Aragon, right? And I used Aragon Blade in the end, so I used the Slash Attack. So I, I really can't explain to you what why I didn't do that. Yeah, so there's a chance, because based on... How much damage was this? It was... What was it? Uh, 2.9 on that one. Okay, so 2.9k. The difference in multipliers on those two skills... I'm just pulling this up real quick. Um, you do get the Earth Killer, so that does help, obviously. Uh, it's 200% with the 25 mod versus Hazard Slash being 225. So it probably would have actually been close to the same damage because she's an Earth unit specifically. But in most cases, I would say try to check what your most damaging move is, which is typically Hazard Slash, just to see, you know, can I get the one shot? Yeah, definitely. So but, even, even if it wouldn't have mattered in this case, it doesn't change the fact that I need to, I have the time to check, so I should check. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what, especially if you've already made a decision for your turn, like, I know I want to do this. At least, yeah, exactly. At least check the other options to see if maybe on a future turn you can make a decision faster because of that, or um, you may surprise yourself with uh, some kind of estimated damage. So I'm going back to see if I can see... The other thing about Howlet, though, um, and using his abilities is he has pretty bad AP problems. Okay, so, yeah, he still got 69. Um, I think here I would have done the LB, because the LB imperils wind resistance. So no matter what, you're not one-shotting her, right? Mm -hmm. So what that would do is make sure that the next hit, if they don't fully heal themselves, is probably going to be a full kill. Uh, so they either have to spend a turn healing, which doesn't really work in this class match, or uh, they're just going to die. And it's going to be basically guaranteed. Even if they put a barrier up, or uh, I think she already has Protect and Shell on, which actually is yeah. probably a reason you're not doing way more damage here. Uh, 
it's only 300 difference and her being on 1500 versus 1800 is unlikely to matter uh whereas the 18 percent, and if you put any levels into your lb it's gonna be more than that uh could matter later so yeah. just a small thing like it, it largely may not matter but it's just a thing to think about yeah absolutely that makes a lot of sense Okay, so those are the two major turns. Now, this is the final turn where I think that there's a major lesson uh, to be <laughs> learned. Uh, do you know what I'm going to say? Maybe. Yeah, so this one it was tragic. This is this was uh, okay. You know, somebody hates me <laughs> in uh, Goonie. So, not that I don't support risking a 73% to basically win the game. Like, if you kill this Leela here, the game's basically over. However, you still have a charmed unit. And a charmed unit, when it has advantage on your unit, which is fire on ice, and also it's just going to probably kill Howlett because he's kind of squishy, uh, I would have 110% just auto attacked my Delia. Okay. So you could have done. I think you could have actually gotten a lot of AP from it too. Uh, so he's facing this way. Mm -hmm. If you would have gone, say, here and then just auto attacked him and then you can look at the turn order uh let's see so Kilfe would have gone again so she could lb him but then she's not doing anything and how it finishes her um maybe she can't really do energy buster because it's too slow so i definitely think auto attacking there would have been better i know i think you end up i don't know if you get punished for it or not i don't remember what happens but i think my delete is pretty tame uh howlet does have protect and um the the barrier from mastery's tmr on so i knew Mastery that TMR, yeah. i knew that delita wasn't going to kill him and i knew delita wasn't going to silence him because he already used his lb i believe so that's fair but i also <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that's so true it always feels bad missing those take it from me in my 97s <laughs> yeah oh yeah absolutely Which if people don't if people don't know about that briefly uh there were uh community held tournaments by longtime twitch um where i made the finals two tournaments in a row and both of them went to game three and in both game threes i missed 97 percent full lives uh on my units to basically <laughs> lose the game or i would have won had the full life hit or i would have been extremely favored and i would have had to try hard to lose if they had hit <laughs> yeah that makes so... me feel a little bit better it's uh it's it's a meme at this point uh i have my own role in the pvp discord uh, mr 97 <laughs> <laughs> or mr three percent mr three percent okay so here this is uh pretty paltry damage to be honest yeah. um i'd be feeling really good right there as long as your delito doesn't destroy her that is incredible by the way even through the protected mastery like i, I delita hurts that was amazing <laughs> oh yeah and then okay, the so energy buster is unfortunate now she could have she was here before right yeah, she was. Uh, so she could have got the the two of them, I guess, right? But then, well, she could have done it without moving. Oh, I see. Okay, because it goes. So through. yeah, yeah. So she could have done it without moving, and then she would have conserved CT. And then I don't know what this turn order looks like. So she's here. She might have actually maybe beaten Howlett, depending on their agilities. Again, um, not knowing their stats, uh, it's kind of hard to really judge that. But. So I think again. I make the decision, and this this shows that the that the drain evo would have been fine uh, either way with yeah. my ergo blade. But again, I make the decision. Delita is not going to kill Howlet, so I better take out this kill fay. Right. But I'm not even so, thinking about full life. So yeah, the full life is a problem, uh, especially because I think if you were to just walk up, I'm pretty sure so you can get on the crystal. You could just stuff her. <laughs> Wow, yeah. <laughs> um, you can't hazard slash because the it's range three, so it would go one, two, three, and it's not a height of two. Um, it's a height difference of one, AOE of one. So you wouldn't have been able to hit her with that, but you could have either uh, Drainy Vode here and stood here, and then you put a pressure on her. Like, if she doesn't... So she's... Uh, this is a more advanced thing, too, but she's four away, right? Do you know the range of full life? Uh, I don't. So it's three. So if she was standing here she could full life and run away. But because she's out of range of the full life, she has to move towards you to full life to kill Faye. So if you were to put pressure here, you'd be able to not only, you could still drain you of her if you want, or you could see if, this is another one of those times where you at least check, check to see if you can one shot the Leela because she has the access to the full life. 
Um, and if you can't, yeah, just drain Evo here. And then if she moves up and full lifes, she has to stand, what, here, here, here. Like, these are all bad spots. So probably one of, like, over here. Within three, you can just AoE her down the next turn or kill her. So um, I definitely would have at least moved up to the crystal, especially because he's getting... He's going to be lower on AP in another, in another turn or two. Now, I wonder if I move up after doing the Drain Evo. We'll see what I do. Because I also... Um, I mean, would oh, you have, right, haven't moved. Would you have would you have broken the the charm there? Yes. No, I run away. Do I run away? Okay. Okay. Are... So you do still put the pressure. Okay. Oh, what? Oh, well, oh. I think oh, I'm oh. flustered. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, right here, you 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 created an advantage and then retreated. So that's yeah, that's just a. It's probably just like a like you said, you're recording flustered type thing. And I think they must have been too. Yeah. I think I think there's a chance that this person was. was I mean, also... They're not a good spot. Like their charm, or their gift of a free charm hasn't paid off at all for them. <laughs> now this does suck again, but I mean, he, the amount of damage you're not taking is very impressive. Now that oh he misses yeah. it, and you can look at my face. Oh. You can you guys can't see it, but. <laughs> I forgot that he misses that. Oh. Wait, how does he? Wait, you don't win this? I know, I know. Wait, wait, you don't win this match? Uh, let's not dwell on that too much. I don't remember. Also, wait, hold on. So that kind of evened it out. That evened out the jump missing. But then I, so, like you said, I could have applied pressure. And so my here's the other thing. Moved up. Do you see where you're standing? Yes. Do you see this range? If you just stood here, <laughs> you could have hit her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With uh, jamming thrust to potentially kill. Again, uh, earlier in the match, had you checked the jamming thrust damage at least, you would have known. I don't have the you have even cut out because the it's, uh because white mage, but but yeah, the drain Evo is Oh, life. Yeah. you're yeah. on. I completely forgot that you're on white mage. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I've been talking this whole time about jamming thrust. I, I'm no, sorry. you you mostly said drain Evo. You're on. You're on point. So what what the heck Maybe am the I doing now? Like, I'm like casting buffs. Um, yes, let's see what happens. I stacked up kill. nicely. Oh, because she can go Animal Pumpkin here. Which doesn't remove, like, the shell or anything, but it's still a lot of damage. Okay, it's just holy. So here, it still looks fine. Doesn't it? <laughs> so shell... Just unfortunate because doing shell means you kind of want to, you know, live a little longer, but you can't heal up. No, exactly. So, I, and I think I you, you need to just be putting down the DPS. Yeah, exactly, or even saving the CT. And so here, that auto attack is juicy. So now, I'm, in my brain, as soon as I see that bar for an auto attack, my thoughts like, oh, my skills are gonna just like kill her, and I get really excited. No, I don't. But you think had I, no AP. Yeah, because I, 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 my charm, and see, there, there's the downside of charm. I used up all my AP on Howlet. Yeah, so while you didn't get punished for not breaking the charm that much, except for this AP problem now, I still would have broken it earlier. Uh, mainly on that Victra turn here, because then you could have auto-attacked and actually ran away also mm -hmm. with Victra. And then, I mean, they have to respect Victra to just come in horizontal again later. So, And then you also didn't face her, but, you know, small things. Okay, so... Here they have to choose who to take out, so that makes sense because she's probably gonna lap by standing still, I imagine. Okay, so all right, that's their mistake. Yeah. If you saw the turn order, they're still here. They could just end their turn and then next turn do like animal pumpkin run away or anything else run away, but they chose to give you a turn, which was pretty big for them. So I'm checking what I still have. Yep. Perfect. Thinking, the crystal. Look at that. Got <laughs> 56. Oh man. Is that a side attack too? It looks like it might be. That's the one downside to the, the aerial. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. It's it's from the front. It would say right here yeah. with a side back. Unless it's blocked above here. I don't think it is though. Yeah, she's facing you. Oh, and it hits. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, you hit. Yeah, you're even surprised. Right? <laughs> I forget too. It's been so long since I watched this. I watched it like the day you released it, but I haven't uh, gone back. Yeah. So this so is like partially my fresh thoughts watching it again as well. So I think my luck officially bounced out in this match, and it, 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 so at the end of the day, you can't get tilted. I made the wrong decisions. Look at yeah, that. I think not breaking the charm, and then the corpse win. No, because you would have had her side. I had the, that was the immortal spirit 
and, and I'm freaking out. You guys, again, you can't see. Maybe I'll find a way to cut that over <laughs> and just my face like freaking out because that's just <laughs> like it couldn't have been more winnable. Yeah, so I think, yeah, the biggest thing was um, actually, could you, you couldn't hit that charm without charming your own unit, right? I, I pr I'm pretty pretty sure that's the, the case. I, that I, I think it was max to... range. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I think here because how it gets a turn. I just want to double check, make sure I'm giving the right to. Yeah. Because Delita moved up, does the, the most amazing kill I've ever seen in my life. And then, yeah, yeah, so Victor would be able to poke there. And yeah, without, and without having to uh, to move first. Yeah, so she could actually move over and take a crystal so they can't gobble it up later. There's a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. And then if you move over, it forces Leela to go exactly here if she wants to hit both of them because it has a range of four. So one, two, three, four. If she wants to stretch two to hit the Victra had she moved. So they'd have, but then they'd break the charm, which they're not going to do. So Victra is safe. Uh, Killfake could do something, but you have Howlet threatening. So yeah, there's a lot of um, things that I think would have gone better had this been broken. Yeah, I think that's in the end, at the end of the day, breaking breaking the charm the first or even the second time, uh, and then being an aggr aggressive, I think is really a key that you you spoke about all the times I could have taken an extra step forward, uh, moved uh, pressed the Leela with my Howlet, uh, all these little things I could have done to. To take more of an advantage but uh i kept taking like the slightly more passive or fully passive mm -hmm. route right right yeah um overall i mean those those couple really picky things are probably i mean they're they're very small um like check, not checking the damage here isn't a big deal because she probably wasn't dead if all of those weren't doing more like this probably is exactly the same amount of damage that the uh, hazard slash would have done just because it's you know 25 killer versus mm -hmm. You know, an extra 25% just straight up. So likely wouldn't have killed, but just checking it uh, because it is the highest damage ability. Uh, maybe, yeah, like you saw our later, Drain Evo did a significant damage. I think it was the 1900. So it would have brought her to lower. Well, it done more damage than her remaining health here, which means that the same hit while doing more later would have also it, like it, it's still two turns, but you could have yeah. done it for her. And then it also gives you the potential that if Leela walks up, uh, your abilities will do more damage to her as well because you have a, like 100% extra magic, which for how it's like 280 or something or 300 or something, it's, it's so much. So, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, um, I don't think there's, I think I said pretty much everything I remember uh, and that I'm seeing now, mainly just right here auto attack your Delita, mm -hmm. walk over, gra grab the crystal. Um, or honestly, just see if you can kill the kill fae. There's another one. Yeah, um, I could, I could gambling here because then she has to run up. Yeah. Yeah, so. for sure. For sure. Because I think you did a snipe. Oh no, you did that. Okay. So you uh, saw that you could kill her, and you're like, eh. Because now, in your defense, uh, she does go before it resolves. So. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, there you go. Probably not the right choice, but I wonder if like a snipe dagger or a sneak attack would have done it. Because uh, I don't know. Her did back I... is to you. Mm -hmm. So you could have actually walked through because it's your unit and stood on this crystal and sneak attacked. Probably would have killed. That does a lot of damage. Um, and then you'd have your Victor here against their Leela. And if the Leela wants to hit you with anything other than like what her arrow, she has to also hit the Delita. So, yeah, good to know. Um, yeah, this is amazing feedback, by the way. I mean, I'm, I'm getting free of charge. I'm getting coached <laughs> right now. So, I mean, that's huge. Yeah, the 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 payment is the opportunity to be on your channel and uh, course, spread to yeah. a brand new crowd of people who may or may not now, care as much as I do about this. But If if I wanted to start up uh, my very own live PvP podcast, would you be part of it? Ooh. I mean, you would... <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing that's a, you. That's a... Uh, spicy question <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm actually teasing you because you have we haven't talked about it yet uh you you have a, a a live pvp podcast as well as your stream so people can check that out uh and uh our ideas are really similar so you have let's talk tactics that's your uh live pvp podcast with daniel boone and yes. uh, and lock uh and then what i would do is i would snipe you away from them and we would our podcast would, would be called let's get tactical <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's actually really good. I like that. Uh, but That's no, so tactical. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. So if you guys, 
If you guys want to know more about live PvP, you can watch uh, Prodigy all week long on his live stream. Uh, but you can also go watch his weekly podcast, uh, Let's Talk Tactics, and there's a ton of insight. Um, not only about it's like it's live PvP themed, obviously, and there's a lot of talk about live PvP. But they also review the new units, the new cards, and they talk about their context in live PvP. Uh, but that that context it actually applies everywhere. Like if a unit's good, they're going to be good, and these guys know units better than most of us so uh really good source to go to for information sorry i just had to had to pause it on the uh on the miss <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is not a, a guildly thing to do like honestly uh, uh, <laughs> sorry um yeah no absolutely uh, look at my face the, on the, the pause too <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah so i mean the like these sort of talks and these breaking down little tiny details is what we love to do on the podcast so if you like this sort of gritty detail uh it's definitely a place for you i know this video is probably pretty long at this point um, we're, i don't know how much cutting you're gonna minutes. do but there you go so that's like our podcasts are typically at least 60 minutes um between like say 55 and like a minute or an hour and a half i think is the longest one so they are long form but that's kind of the whole point right mm -hmm. like we want to really talk about every detail of a certain topic that at least we can remember at the time without sort of glossing over anything. We want to make sure we hit every single point. So yeah, I right. uh, nope. would love to see uh, some of the viewers there. I don't want to like poach your viewers or anything. Obviously no. continue watching Mercedia Gaming. Uh, you're kind of like the other half a coin, like everything we don't do, you do, which is fantastic. <laughs> and then you're also dipping into the class matches. So it's kind of yeah. an all in one channel. I'm for sure making a class match video for this one. Uh, and it's, it might be just as embarrassing, but uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, thank you yeah, so the, much for joining me, man. And, and I, I really appreciate all the insight because, I mean, hopefully I'll be better for my next video. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, keep practicing. All right. So yeah, actually, and I'll end it on this. Uh, top three things. Uh, use the map view. Not necessarily top down, but like on their turns. Map view, gather information, read stats, do whatever, check the vision cards. Uh, get your full timer and play a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you got to play. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much, everybody, everybody for uh, uh, for watching, and I'll put all the links to uh, Prodigy's stuff in the description below, and uh, we'll probably chat with all of you in the comments as well. So be sure to comment, uh, and then we'll both be monitoring that uh, closely. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace.